Uh, good afternoon to all. So uh, today I'll be the last presenter of the day, but I promise to be brief. So I'm supposed to be presenting on the discharge uh, protocol, but it's rather brief. So with the sudden surge of patients, we do have a few changes uh, in our uh, management of patients. How how actually what actually goes uh, on the ground lah. So this is actually what happens uh, with uh, for someone who is a confirmed COVID-19. So previously we do admit everybody to the hospital, but now because of the uh, as you know, because of the huge numbers, so these are the three options. Uh. So if they are very uh, comfort, if they are fit, comfortable, uh, cat one, cat two, no comorbids, they might be suitable for home quarantine. So they will uh, they will send to uh, CAC for daily monitoring uh, at CAC. But uh, there are also some who do actually require admission to is either low risk center or admission to hospitals. So uh, from hospital. Uh, so from hospital they can be uh, stepped down uh, to either usually is is uh, to to either uh, PKRC that's actually to home quarantine uh, but uh, and PKRC also can either be stepped down or they need to be escalated or treatment uh, sent to the, to the hospital. Okay, in terms of probable case, uh, what it means is that uh, RTK positive but PCR still pending. So there are previously so we do admit all but now because uh, so many centers uh, actually offering uh, uh, RTK so we are not able to actually cater to everyone so therefore we actually uh, risk assess them and those who are actually suitable for home isolation uh, those who are very uh, fulfill few criteria meaning that they are uh, no comorbids fit uh, fit healthy uh, not so much of symptoms no comorbids and uh, less than six years old they can actually be home isolated lah. Uh, while waiting for the PCR result to be available. But if they are unstable, they actually have to be admitted to the hospital. But now, because of the, uh, we have a few uh, places, uh, for example, the, the one that is happening in Jitra. So if you are actually from, coming from a, a strong epic link uh, or, and with a presentation which is so uh, COVID-19, this RTK positive can actually be uh, considered as a confirmatory test. We do not have to wait for PCR to actually start treatment uh, as per uh, COVID. We treat as per COVID while waiting for, uh, uh, without having to wait for the PCR. But you need to have that uh, strong epidemic or, uh, and also uh, presentation which is uh, so COVID. Uh, okay. So these are some criteria for patients who are actually suitable for uh, low risk center. Uh. So clinically, they are CAT1, CAT2. Those who are with pneumonia, uh, they, they, we do not really, uh, as of now, we do not directly admit them, but it's actually a step down care lah from, uh, from uh, what to PKRC. Age-wise, uh, previously we say that it's age less than 60, then we, we further up to 70. Uh, but now, those who are actually very fit, they might, uh, they can actually be admitted to PKRC lah. Uh, so, uh, and what is important is that they do not actually need assistant ambulation because mind you, PKRC is usually uh, uh, they use uh, hostels or places that, that requires you to use the stairs. So this is another factor lah that has to be considered. Uh, doesn't require any intravenous injection. Mm. <laughs> okay, so that was on PKRC. Then who has to be admitted to hospital? Those who are cat three and birth, uh, those who are requiring assistance in daily activities, uh, end stage requiring dialysis, uh, pregnancy uh, at uh, more of 34 weeks of uh, gestation, or any medical condition which actually require uh, inpatient treatment or surgical intervention, and a uh, uh, probable case uh, which fulfill admission uh, criteria. So these are the admission criteria. And uh, in terms of a uh, pregnant lady, so if they have any obstetric indication, they need to be admitted uh, 34 weeks uh, and above. If they have any warning sign, any uh, cat tree and above, or and uh, if they have significant comorbidities uh, or obesity, they need to be assessed first uh, for admission first. But those who are less than 34 weeks, cat one, cat two, without significant comorbidity, they can actually be managed at home as per the uh, other populations. Okay. In terms of probable case, uh, basically, 
age more than 60, but those who are fit 60 years old might still be uh, be quarantined at home first uh, while waiting for uh, PCR. If there is any warning sign, clinically cat three and above, uh, this is uh, the usual. Uh, this is the uh, public health thing. Uh, not a home not suitable for self isolation, or if they have any medical condition that, that requires hospitalization. So this is in terms of probable cases. Uh. So as of now, uh, this is quite recent. Lah. So in terms of Kedah, we have actually, uh, how do we actually manage COVID now? It actually has been divided into zones. Lah. So now we have got uh, northern zones, middle zone, and so southern zones. So we have, if you're talking about uh, northern zones, it's actually comprised of uh, HSB. Then we also have our hostel corner and uh, Jitra is also joining us. Lah. So uh, hospital corner is our second main hospital. Lah. Besides uh, Hospital Alosta, Jitra is uh, currently still being called Transit Hospital, but uh, I think there are latest updates coming through lah, uh, in terms of its status. Okay, and uh, in terms of Zone Tengah, the main hospital would be uh, Hospital Sultan Halim, and they also have wards in the old hospital. And uh, next to the uh, nearby, they would have the PKRC lah, uh, for SP, and uh, the other hospital, the other main hospital for them would be Hospital Yan. And hostel sick also would be the the the, the feeder hospital lah subsequently. So in terms of uh, zone selatan, southern zone, uh, the 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 main center initially was uh, PKRC Kolem. So we we just set up hospital baling lah as the next uh, hospital. If if any of the PKRC uh, those from PKRC Kolem need to be uh, upgraded, uh, need to be escalation need any escalation of care, they can be sent to hospital baling or if Actually, it requires uh, more acute attention than they, they have to be referred to Hospital Stana Bahia. Lah. Okay. And uh, besides that, Hospital Kulim also have got a few awarded patients, lah, uh, COVID patients currently in Watson. Lah. So basically, uh, what does this, uh, how does this zone, uh, zoning place a role will be? It will help us in terms of uh, patient disposition and also the referral pathway. Lah. So, so basically, those who are from Kupang Pasu, Kota Star, many that those who are in this district, they would actually refer uh, to us. They admitted to, uh, as, as of now, they've been admitted to uh, Stana Bahia, Konerang, uh, and, uh, or, uh, or any PKRC. Lah. So if they need any set up care, uh, the, the main center would be Stana Bahia. And Jitra, as of now, is still the, uh, um, the, the uh, transit hospital. Lah. In terms of zone tengah, uh, so those from Yan, Kuala Muda, Sek, uh, uh, Bali, they, they refer to uh, SP, uh, SPID physician team, then they'll be admitted to uh, SP and also uh, the second hospital will be Hostel Yan. And uh, if they need ICU care, uh, any, uh, any, any acute intervention, then it will be uh, SP hospital. And as I mentioned just now, those from southern zone, uh, meaning that those are from Bandar Baru, Kulim, Bali, they need to, uh, the, the main uh, hospital there would be uh, Hospital Bali. So, patients who are from PKRC or those from uh, at home that requires hospital admission can be admitted to Hospital Bali. But if they are not, uh, but if they are, they, they, they are at high risk, higher risk or need, uh, need uh, set up care, the main hospital would be uh, Hospital Subaya uh, as of now. So hospital Kulim is also uh, as now uh, still uh, functioning as transit hospital. Lah. So I think uh, final uh, guideline is still coming coming through. Lah. So that's all. Uh, that's all on the uh, what lah, the setup of COVID in Kedah lah, uh, the the updated one. So my for my final part, I'll go through on what is our follow up plan lah, for for those who are post COVID. Lah. So basically, nothing much lah. So those who are cat one, cat two, uh, or low, low risk cat three, they don't actually require follow ups. So those that actually require follow up mainly would be uh, cat four and cat five, or those cat cat three with significant comorbids or complications lah. So those with cat four, cat five, they actually require uh, appointment with mainly ID or uh, respi lah. Uh, and uh, those who has actually stabilized can be uh, sent to MOPD. So why do uh, why why do we need actually follow up? Because uh, those who are cat four, cat five, they are usually given uh, high dose steroid. 
So they are actually being tapered. The syrup are actually being tapered. So we, we do not want that. Uh, we do not want uh, discharge pressure. Then once we off the steroid, they develop rebound. Is there any rebound? So which is why we do actually see them within two to one uh, two weeks to one month after discharge, if uh, especially if their their steroid is currently being tapered. So our so our our usual plan would be uh, we see them uh, within uh, two to four weeks uh, post discharge, uh. and uh, we do refer to our respiratory colleague. And uh, they also have got uh, their, their own follow up uh, plan. Uh. So as as a uh, as a rough guideline, they actually see those who are at cat three in three to four months. Uh, cat four they see within uh, twelve weeks, and cat five they see earlier lah, uh, within six to ten weeks uh, post post discharge. So this is actually from uh, Dr. Arvin. I'm, share, I'm sharing this from Dr. Arvin. This is what they do lah in their chest follow up uh, clinic. So they assess the, the, the patient, uh, asking in terms of related symptoms. Uh, and as we know, most, most of our patients do develop psychosocial, uh, psychological side effects. Uh. Some of them do develop depression. And they also have got a uh, respiratory assessment. Uh. They do uh, ABC, DLCO, six-minute walking test uh, in, uh, some, uh, in, uh, in most of the patients. And uh, in some patients, they also, also proceed with uh, repeat HRCT. Uh. And uh, usually in those with cat four, cat five, especially in those with cat five, they would already have uh, significant X-ray changes from the X-ray, or they would have a CT scan of the uh, CT scan from here. So if there's actually evidence of fibrosis, they actually have got a follow-up HRCT, uh, and uh, they also work out for other cause of fibrosis besides attributing to COVID. Uh. So in general, what they do is that uh, they do a repeat X-ray. So if it's normal, they can uh, discharge. But uh, if there is any significant anomaly, they do proceed with uh, uh, further imaging or not. Okay. okay. So that's all on chest follow-up. And this is what actually happened uh, for those who are being discharged. So you know that they they are prone to develop uh, something called as long COVID syndrome, lah. So we know that most of our uh, patient actually uh, still do have symptoms lah, but some some of those patients actually came back seeking for treatment with either there is actually significant symptoms. So if they do come, uh, if they are actually recovered COVID patients has been discharged from hospital and they have got something which is significant symptoms, whether it's uh, worsening or it's a new significant symptoms, we assess them. So what? Uh, so first of all, we need to assess whether they have got any significant risk exposure lah to uh, COVID, another COVID, uh, COVID uh, uh, exposure. So if they are actually basically more than one month, we have to got, uh, we got, we need to, uh, possibility for us to actually treat them as per another symptomatic PUS. They might need to be uh, reassessed back lah, re -swap. Okay. But if uh, there is no, actually, if there is actually no significant exposure, and if they are actually uh, less than one month, uh, less than one month after, uh, from the COVID, uh, the first COVID infection, then uh, need to update us. Then we actually decide uh, whether we need to further work out. Uh, uh, we need to actually uh, re-admit them or do further work out, or they can be uh, treated uh, expectantly. Uh, or if they are more than 28 days and no significant exposure, we also need to, uh, so basically they are, uh, we need to look out for other cause of respiratory infection lah, besides COVID. Okay. I think that's all. If you have any question? Okay, we've got, if there was, there's only, uh, any question, then I think we can end here. Dr. So, Shafa, anything to add? Oh. No. Mm -hmm.